Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about setting up the brushes for your animation. So for paperless animation, I usually like to have a few brushes that I use in order to get my animation down. And it really comes down to the look and feel of your brush stroke. Toon Boom Harmony does come up with a certain set of brushes that I like to use and customize for setting up a uh, paperless character for animation. Now what I am using is a custom brush and I'm going to show you how to set up custom brushes to be used when you're making your paperless animation. The reason why I have a custom brush made is because I like to have something more softer and wider than what is traditionally used for Harmony and set up your custom brush as well organize your brushes so that way you're ready to go ahead and do animation. Now I have this actual tool menu and I'm going to show you how to use it. The first thing you know is that my brushes are actually in this order here, which is a thumbnail view, but it's not actually in a list view. You can go ahead and change that using this menu here. So for example, I can go ahead and see a bigger thumbnail, so that way I can see the brush and the brush stroke or I can go ahead and make it into a list view and then it has the name and the brush stroke. You can choose how you see the list of brushes that you have but I want to let you know that all of these actual brush tips are available when you install Toon Boom Harmony and you can go ahead and actually make a import or an export of these. So for example I could go here select the brushes that I like, I can go ahead and export it to a file. So now, if I ever make modifications to this, and let's say I change it, I can go ahead and import my default brushes, and it should go ahead and overwrite them. There you go. So, let me give you an example of a custom brush now. These two brushes are my custom brushes. I took the original Toon Boom Harmony brushes and made a softer fine pencil brush. So you can see that it's a little bit wider. And that is because when you're animating fast, you do want to have a wider brush. And as well, I have the ability to go ahead and change my pressure for this. So you see my pressure is light, but when I press hard, it's very wide. So I set this up so that way I can go ahead and press hard, or if I'm light, then it's very thin. So that way I don't have to go back here and change my thickness. I can go very thin and light, and then if I press harder, then I get a very thick line. So when I'm shading, I can go ahead and shade from very thin to very thick, like so. And this is very nice because when I like to do animation, I like to get some shading in there as well. I like to be thick when I'm doing my rough draft, and also I like to go thin when I'm doing cleanup. So there is a bit of technique when I'm doing my pencil animation. So you can see here, if I'm animating hair, I can do it thick. But then if I need to go ahead and do the eyebrows, for example, then I should be able to do thin eyebrows. Sometimes I need to be able to do thin eyebrows, so then I will have Sometimes I need to have a thinner brush, so I made up a second animation brush, and that is a thinner one to do the work. Such as having an H2, such as having a soft pencil, such as a 4B. So knowing your pencils are important so you can do your animation work. You want to get everything ready for doing paperless animation, uh, professionally. 
and first we're going to make a custom brush using the Toon Boom Harmony brush tools here and the textures that are used provided by Toon Boom. Then I'm going to show you how to import a brush from Photoshop into Toon Boom Harmony basically making the same modifications to this to match the brush that I have in Photoshop or in other tools that I like. So we're going to go ahead and make a new brush off of this solid brush one. And I'm going to give it a name blue in order to make this a blue pencil for later use. So watch how I do it. I'm going to make a copy. Then I'll move it up here so that way it's underneath. So the first thing I need to do is select a brush that allows vector texture. Do not use the solid brushes because these are pure vector brushes and they will not allow texture. So let's say, for example, I see this one here, which is a colored pencil. This is a colored pencil number 10. It's okay, but it doesn't allow for soft shading that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new one. And I will call this So this is to be similar to my um, Cole Erase Pencil that is blue. Now it has copied the properties over, but I'm going to go ahead and move this up. Now we're going to go ahead and modify the properties of this. This will be a textured vectored brush. So now we're going to select a texture. And you can choose if you want to brush one or brush two. This comes with Toon Boom. And I think you will probably want to have something softer. So I use brush number one. Brush number four is a little bit harder. And they also have different tips that are a little bit lighter as well. So you can choose, but I usually prefer brush one. Or I prefer tip number 16. Then as well, you can go ahead and modify some of the settings so that way it's a little bit softer. If you hit this arrow key here, you'll have some more options such as tilting. And you have also taper. So if you want to have these settings on, this will help you when you draw. But for my brush, I prefer something a little bit more softer and a little bit more thicker. So I will go ahead and modify this. Make sure it doesn't have a contour. Make a little bit thinner. And I prefer something with texture so I can shade with it. But you need to be able to build on it. So let's go ahead and soften it up a little bit more. We also have a paper texture that you can use to add more feeling and texture to your brush stroke. And this is important for shading. As you can see here, 
As I build up, I can go ahead and add more darkness and as I draw, I can go ahead and build up some of the edges. As I draw, you can see I can build up some of the edges using that texture. And without it, it doesn't quite have the same build up feeling. So I like to use the paper texture and you can choose one that you think works. This is a marker texture, which I find to be too smooth. And texture number six tends to be too smooth. So I usually like to use the crayon compact texture versus the crayon. But you can also go ahead and use the crayon. So I usually set up like this, crayon compact. I give it around a six or seven. There you go. I use this tool here. I wanted to make sure that when I draw with it, you know, I want to make sure when I draw with it that I feel very comfortable when shading and coloring there. This is for a second tip, but I don't need this. This is for a second tip. If you want to use it, you can go ahead and add a secondary tip. It will make it a little bit more thinner because you add more um, information to it. The second tip will add a little bit more variety to your brush stroke, but also you notice it will make it a little bit smoother, but that's okay. We want something smooth and light so that way I can go ahead and build my character foundation. You have something very smooth and light so you can build your character foundation. And then this way you can get to animating pretty fast. There. Now I can build off my foundation. It should be loose. You should not have it very tight. Your drawing should be loose and sketchy and not tight so that way you can do animation pretty fast. If you have it too tight or too much detail you will not be able to have that much chance to do uh, character animation like this. You will not be able to do uh, character expressions very fast or straightforward animation that easily if there's too much detail. So keep it very loose and light as you uh, build your foundation. And then you can go ahead and add detail later using another brush. I'm going to save it such as this, and then now I will check it and test out my pencil. As I draw fast, it will get thinner. As I draw slower, it will get thicker. It's mimicking the actual traits of a pencil. As I draw fast,
as I draw fast, it's going to have traits for it to get thinner, and then it also has a little bit of taper with it. So I believe that this pencil is very good. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to go ahead and test it right now. Let's draw a quick character. Remember, it's okay to be loose. I'm going here and I'm going to make a keyframe. I'm going here and I'm going to make an exposure. And then you can see using my onion skin tool. It's very easy to draw and match up very fast. So this is kind of the idea. of using that pencil. There we go. Nice and loose. We'll get into animation in a bit, but I just want to make sure I have the right pencil that I like. If I want to go ahead and modify this one to be thinner, I can go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, this is a fine pencil. Let's see if I can rename this. Yeah. This is my, this is more of a 2H. And now I have my animation pencil blue. So I have so I have my pencil HB, I have my 2H and my animation pencil blue. But this animation pencil blue is not blue. It's actually black. So you have to be aware of that. Now there's one more tool that I want to make sure I set up which will be my erasure tool. I need to get my eraser tool prepared. So I went ahead and modified my favorite pencil tools here. I'm going to go ahead and modify my eraser tools as well. So what we have are two types of erasers. We have a vector eraser, which allows for vector style erasing, which I do not like for erasing the brush stroke that we made. So if I go ahead and take my small eraser and draw a line, it looks good for erasing the vector stroke, but it doesn't really look good for erasing the vector texture. So I like to use something called soft eraser, and I'm going to make some modifications to it. So that way, when I'm erasing it, soften those corners. And this will be important later for doing paperless animation. There we go. And then also, just to keep the feeling, I will go ahead and add a texture to it. So also, I will add a texture to my soft eraser, so that way it allows me to keep the texture. And you'll see what I'm able to do. So now, I'm able to keep the texture of the soft eraser, so that way I can keep the quality of the texture line. I can go ahead and lightly erase it for a paperless animation. And this is a technique that we use in animation. So you will see as I go ahead and use my animation pencil and then I build it up. I can go ahead and then erase it softly. So now I can go ahead and say that my basic animation tools are set. So now I want to do the final thing, which is set my shortcuts. 
So the next step that I need to do is set up my custom brush tool to make my custom brushes, including my blue pencil that matches my coal erase.